Okay. So welcome all uh, to those who are here and to those who are about to arrive. We've got uh, with us as our guests today Irena Pivka and Brane Zorman. And they are co-founders of Zona Institute, uh, which is um, um, well, an institute for contemporary art processing in Ljubljana, in the lovely Slovenia. And Ljubljana is uh, sometimes called the fairy tale capital of, um, uh, of Europe. Um, and if you have been, you know that this is true. They, in uh, that is uh, Irena and Brane, they also uh, are gallery curators at Stack Clinic which is a, a gallery for sound, bioacoustics and art in the Tivoli greenhouse, also in Ljubljana. And sadly, because of COVID, um, the greenhouse and most of uh, Ljubljana for, and most of Slovenia, if I understand Irena and Brana correctly, uh, is closed. So even if you are in Ljubljana, you can not visit the gallery today. Um, right now but uh, you should if you can uh, they're going to talk a little bit about their work today after which we'll follow up with a discussion between all of you and Irene and Brane uh, and part of what they'll talk about is their work sandbox uh, which is one of the shortlisted pieces for this year's Soundwalk September 2020 award um, and uh, which is set in Ljubljana uh, and uh, Sandbox, as they say themselves, is like a, a mediate, meditative, meditative, excuse me, meditative experience around wakefulness training and encouragement to critically think about our experience in and the re-evaluation of our surrounding environment. Um, and uh, with that, almost, I would like to hand over to Brane and Irena. I need to say that we are under a bit of time constraint because um, due to COVID, um, uh, Ljubljana is under lockdown as of 9.30, I think, tonight, or maybe a little bit later. But it means that we need to uh, really finish in 90 minutes. Otherwise, Brane and Irena, Irena will not be able to get home. And um, that is, of course, not something that we would like to see happen. It, it, well, unless, of course, you're all ready to talk for 12 hours, uh, and then we can keep on going until tomorrow morning, but that might be a little bit uh, asking too much. Uh, so with that, I would like to hand over to Brane and Irena. Thank you, Babak. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here with us. Uh, thank you, uh, the whole crew of Walk, uh, Listen, Create, uh, uh, to invite us and to uh, invite our work sandbox to be uh, uh, presented here uh, and even being shortlisted uh, for this year's awards. Um, as Mavak uh, told, uh, told you already, we are from Ljubljana and uh, we do a lot of uh, projects. Uh, uh, based on listening and experience, walking, listening, and uh, all these uh, things that come together, of that kind of merge into the uh, Stecklinic Gallery and some other events and places that we uh, work with, collaborate with all these institutions, etc., etc. So uh, let's uh, start with our uh, talk. Um, Irena will post you in the chat window a uh, uh, link to the file. Uh, you can read the whole. Uh, we had to kind of um, take out few parts uh, due to the, the to be more fast uh, to go through the, the whole uh, paper here. Um, and uh, our uh, talk is uh, called. Uh, sound boxes, contemporary art practice, possible ways of listening and sound integration of space and time. This is what we are really into very much. <coughs> I that that uh, during this uh, short paper, we will also get some um, sound files, so don't be too much reading. And after, of course, we would like to talk, so it's not too long paper. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so uh, walking as the principle of analog coordination of mind of movement as a political act 
used today more than ever to implicitly express our view on the evaluation of time. Going place on foot is a waste, yet simultaneously a gift of time, claiming time to more whereby remaining of the omen's metronome. In exploring the landscape through the sound, it is impossible to ignore the sound generated by omnipresent human and his activities. Although we might find it disturbing or even want to avoid it, its acknowledgement takes us straight to the core of particular place. Romanticizing landscape, our default notion of being natural has been long ancient history. Most of Europeans' geography is a cultural landscape that has been formed and transformed by deliberate human intervention. In the Slovenia of what has been left pristine, we have a very small area of primeval forest preserved and protected since 1892. What is my point? The landscape exploration is always more or less associated with the study of human impact through his intervention and activities or a particular ecosystem. Regardless of the weather space as such gave us impression of the urban development or exploitation or an abandoned and degraded area. As stated at the beginning, walking is a primary activity in the exploring of particular place. A sound walk employs walking as an instrument for listening, and sensibilization to fully experience the landscape with simultaneously perceiving its changes. These are dynamic relation of incomplete and involving landscapes entrenched in the natural and primarily capital and cultural interventions. Art performances that we create both for adults and the younger population are based on sound walks in a predetermined location. In most cases, we want to relate the work process that we perform as active listeners of a soundscape to the story of the place and offer it in the form of intimate, individual and performative act practice, art practice. A sound walk that is a walk uh, with a focus on listening implies sensitivity to listening to the environment, wakefulness. You are listening to the surrounding space here and now, and you are present here and now. Walking, that is moving through the location, moving with a focus on listening. Such practice and of, of active listening helps you literally immerse in the place and better understand its genus loci. Active presence and focus on the location through listening is mm. an extremely valuable experience. The participants experience of narr the narrative of locative performances through the intersection of fictitious and actual space. Wearing headphones, they listen to the narrative of the soundscape composition while walking through the actual place. Now and then, the soundscape of the location itself penetrates to the participant and its sounds become part of the composition. The space around becomes a scenography and we, both in the role of, role of lead actors and viewers, explore it. Sensibilization, sensitivity to sound and space and the holistic perception, perception of the landscape are essential to this process. We deal with a highly interesting format, which constitutes new possibilities in the field of narrative, sound, and space. Uh, in our performances, uh, we also use the technique of transposing the actual sound of landscape and listening to this sound in the same landscape, but in a different time making it more settled experience. We find the transposing of sounds a particular important element of sound work based location performances because it sharpens the ear of attentive audience for the language and the dynamic process. 
We strive to make our work So we find the transposing of sound, particularly important element of sound walk based performances, because it sharpened the ear of attentive audience to the landscape's origin and its dynamic process. We strive to make our works primarily a genuine experience of the place and, and the landscape story. Years ago, we conducted a sound research in Tivoli City Park in Ljubljana. We walked about 20 minutes long predeterminated route and recorded its soundscapes in two diametrical opposite solar season, in summer and in the winter. The sound of the same place were recorded while walking the same route in summer and in the winter solicited, and at the same time of day, during the nautical twilight. The audience would later listen to the winter soundscapes in summer solicits and opposite the recording of the summer walk in the winter, listening to the acoustic changes of the same location, of the same route traversed was fascinating. But what is the reason behind this audience change? It is the plants, trees, leaves, which depending on the season and consequently the presence or absence, either absorb or allow the sound of the city to flow freely. It is the state of water in the park in winter or in the summer, a frozen lake that largest natural membranes that vibrates. Uh, now Brane will play just a short expert with uh, my audio piece, I mean it's named Echo Walk and it was commissioned to work for uh, sound camp this year um, in April in the first lockdown, I mean it was really the lockdown. Strolling in the asphalt urban landscape between the buildings, past the houses, on the roads, under the bridge, crossing the square. alone, a flock of birds in front of me, the sky above me, I'm walking alone. So far, all our geolocation sound blocks were created to be enjoyed by individual participants, which makes them a very personal experience. At the beginning of the walk, the audience is provided headphones and a phone with application. 
after which they individually walk along the marked route. The soundscape of recording of is recorded using the binaural microphones. Binaural has headset, which include a full pair of headphones and the microphones are really amazing tools. Uh, they provide a fascinating activity of listening to the space and amplifying spatial sound. They are tools to inspire sensitivity to listening. It is worth noting that deep listening as a form of receptive and active listening is a skill close to oblivion. This technological tool just might be able to reaffirm the sonic awareness of space. In terms of soundscape composition, the appropriately dosed intensity of the sound wave produced by the headphones is of very essence. In the view of anticipating and taking account of the intensity of actual surrounding sound. Audio files are triggered by GPS locations. Every soundscape composition is usually of mosaic of around 30 or more location points, and the, the whole arrangement of audio files constitutes the soundscapes dramaturgically. What makes a sound performance a unique personal and individual experience is not only the act of solo walking, but random development in the surroundings experienced by the individuals on the site. Uh, now is the short uh, expert. I mean, you can also read it about in the text uh, by Brane. Her name is Metal Paul Woodpeckers. So it's the same at the same time for the same uh, festival sound camp. Very much Ljubljana sounds. Uh, <laughs> uh, so now I would shortly like to focus on the sound based location performance sandbox. The most recent performative sound walk premiered September 2020 in Ljubljana. In this work, we explore the degraded area in Ljubljana along the tracks and the central railway station, which has been waiting to be renovated for over a decade. Located downtown, void of content, 
surrounded by construction fence and prepared for urban renewal of the same point some point in the future. When I first visited the location, I had passed by it countless times. I realized I did not really know it at all. It is a stripe of land along the tracks which indicates a possible way in its own right, while at the same time I floating a view of the capital from the completely different new perspective. The horizon that opened up yet to be discovered, view of newly built skyscrapers of the city center that cannot be captured elsewhere, <coughs> while simultaneously invited a step to leave the city behind. Because of inability to dialogue and the conflicting political and capital interest, it is a state of suspension, waiting with the waiting this degraded area has been reclaimed and repopulated by plants. Indeed, it clearly exhibits the concept of the third landscape as defined by Gilles Clemont. This stripe of land along the tracks fully engaged botanical diversity and this immense, immense power of nature which cannot be witnesses elsewhere. Sandbox, uh, geolocational performance, was created during the first lockdown this year when a stock was put to public life, wiping away a thick layer of the cover all and incessant, incessant noise, the omnipresence of which truly hit us only in its absence. Produced by traffic and machinery, this overwhelming noise that we grew accustomed up to, to the point of no perception faded away. The void and quiet emerging from the epidemic finally made it possible to hear what we normally don't. We wanted to illustrate the creative process of the work. It involves deep listening to the space and sound mapping of the landscape, thereby perception of the space in a very special situation. We wanted to translate intense perception and listening to space that we experienced in the work process during quarantine into the end product. The awareness that the performance will most likely be launched into a completely different post-quarantine soundscape made it even more challenging. Uh, so Sandbox is not a story about the human and a humankind, but rather about the humanless world, a grounded universe that evolves in our absence about flora and fauna and their parallel existence here all the time, present and mindful, but fully perceived only when human arrogance subsides. In Sandbox, we explore a narrow space locally. If expanded, however, this space might serve as a simultaneously of potential development of events on a larger scale, possibly anticipation and the future of landscapes in general of our plant and is disconnected between a human and nature. In such a case, a small cell in the context of the sound box, sandbox, can become a representative of a border region, possibly even the nature entire planet, a space that is, in the absence of economical and political dialogue, perfect capable of producing, producing a new landscape itself. Both on large and small scale, this will murder a new cycle, life being regenerated without human supervision and almighty will. Such space, this inability of dialogue, such state of landscape can actually be viewed as a potential. Nature will regard it. Plants have the power, a space abundant and degraded holds within its own power and poetic. Everything is fine, everything is all right. So this, uh, for the last, the short expert uh, audio insert from the sandbox uh, piece. A 
am walking down the railroad tracks by the central train station. I'm walking in the public space. I'm walking in the private space. In the conflicted space. I'm walking down the track. Down the track. Down the track. Down the track. I'm walking down the track. 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 Walking down the track. Down the track. Down the track. Down the track. I'm walking in the degraded urban area that is incapable of dialogue. I'm walking on top of the communication shaft by the tracks. Steps, signals, waves, walking down the track. fluctuations down the track to the west, down the track to a retreat, down the track. I'm walking down the track, down the track, walking down the track, down the track, down the track. Down the track. Down the track. I'm walking down the tracks. The time after the interrupted public life, audible as a thick layer of constant noise. The time after a pause in the thrum. The time after the interrupted hum. The time after a pause. A planet without silence. The noise returns. Returns, 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 the noise returns, the noise returns, returns. Those roaring and droning sounds are not as loud. A silenced space in the middle of the city, in a waiting public space. An awaiting parking place. An awaiting sandbox of political games. Nearly silent. An awaiting space of potential. The peaceful atmosphere is disturbed by the sounds of the train. The airplane. Birds flying over. A seagull squealing, tracks. wings flapping, tracks. 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 Walking down the tracks. 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 In the beginning of May, there was a wild rose blooming underneath the acacia trees. Everything felt empty and silent. A sense of remoteness. I'm watching myself taking steps on top of the communication shaft. A narrow, straight line winding down the tracks. I'm listening to the echoes of my steps resounding from the concrete, walking on top of the shaft. The steps, signals, waves, fluctuations. A steady rhythm by the tracks away from the stressed out city tracks to the west tracks to a retreat tracks 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 this area by the tracks smells differently in this degraded transitional space, nature has taken its place. This space of potential smells differently.
over there, close to the embankment, there were poppies blooming in spring. In spring, everything was quiet here, silent. A sense of silence. Tracks, roads, signals, transmitters, receivers, and in between them, confined spaces. People enjoy being in more places at once. People occupy too many spaces at once. The wanton occupiers of spaces. We the wanton occupiers of spaces have reached our planet's limits. We have lost the sensitivity for the surrounding landscape, forgotten about the time we need to walk through a space, to look at the horizon, to listen to the atmosphere, to feel the environment. The wanton occupiers of space have reached the planetary edge, the limits of our planet. Thank you so <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Irena Embrane, for that uh, wonderful insight into uh, your work and also the great uh, three uh, soundscapes that you uh, let us hear. I have a few questions for you, uh, Irena Embrane. The first one is very practical. You mentioned the, the third landscape by Gilles Clément. Can you say a little bit more about this? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, this concept really, I mean, as I said, when I first uh, came to this place, this concept of Jim Clement really uh, was in front of me because there was uh, a lockdown and this place is totally degraded, uh, but it's in the center of the city. And it was April at the beginning of May where the plants are really blooming. And it was so fascinating, not just plants, but also, I mean, in birds and all these little insects and animals are there and uh, this garden, I mean, actually it was a secret garden. It was fantastic. And I got the feeling that it's just perfect, that it is a place of uh, a conflict. While, I mean, this place was a place of conflict. That's the reason that it was abundant uh, about, I mean, it was a political conflict place. This is the reason why they didn't build a new uh, railway station for 15 years now, because they couldn't decide it who's going to pay it, or state or the municipality, and how they will look like, and so, etc. And there was just the space behind the construction fence. And uh, yeah, I mean, as uh, third, um, third landscapes was explained, it was the real, like <clears throat> here, secret garden, in the center that looks fantastic and yeah so is the landscape know. then a way to describe a hidden place an area that is uh, not unlocked maybe uh i mean it was not a hidden place they just opened it uh they demolished i mean a few months ago they demolished these fences and they opened it like for a park place and that's why we uh realized that place that are here and still abandoned still empty uh, and they turn it into a kind of uh, organized, I mean, park place. And that is also in the text written because I was asking myself, is it private or is it public space? Because it was public space concerning the state, but it was private space because of the municipality. And uh, I mean, actually, it was a place of the uh, plants. So oh, then maybe is third landscape a way to describe an area that uh, operates like a border between different types of regions or a border zone, maybe? Maybe, yes. I mean, especially when you uh, focus on the place that is 
interrupt it with the trails. And uh, I didn't realize that you can go with the trails. I mean, it's not really, it's a little bit tricky because trains can be there, but at that time there were no trains because we were the last time that you can go far away out of the city. And you mm -hmm. know, that you have this um, place that is interrupted in the city, that is emptiness, but actually, on the other kind, you can go far away on the totally other uh, locations. And yeah, that was again for me this kind of merge uh, places. I mean, root and then the stable, like say, stable place at the same time. Yeah, it, right. it can be also seen as a kind of wound or implant uh, in the urban space, urban landscape. Uh, as it is abandoned, and its uh, its abandonedness, it's uh, again used by capital to be used and to produce money. You know, by temporary uh, organizing it uh, or setting it up uh, its legal status as a temporary parking lot. Uh, so you you can see that. Uh, this fast movement of capitalism, uh, which uh, uses uh, all tricks and all opportunities to enrich its potential and impact on surroundings. Actually, this place was meant to, to be a place for build a, a train station, bus station, and another skyscraper. Uh, in Ljubljana, we are getting new skyscrapers, you know, which is really unbelievable. Um, not really high ones, not like in Hong Kong, but skyscrapers. Even though we are on this earthquake uh, zone, uh, on this uh, part, so you know, and then you see this some of those skyscrapers, which also connects maybe to the sandbox on one particular level. Uh, they are building them, and uh, then they are uh, vacant for a year, two years, because the prices are so high. They, people, especially nowadays with this crisis, they really cannot afford them. And what I, what I also wanted to add to Irena's uh, uh, explanation is that uh, what we uh, while we were walking there and researching and standing or meditating and recording, of course, it was really um, like a, a garden, um, as uh, there were so many these sublime sounds that they were present there. I mean, you could hear bees, you could hear crickets. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were. Uh, birds flying on over your head and you could hear their flopping on their wings and so you know it's it was really 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 crazy time and at the and then there were these trains passing with transport trains um, uh, no public transport or just transport uh, with goods uh, with these big chunks of stuff and of course, a lot of um, uh, police and uh, health uh, bands, you know, with the sirens, uh, because the the hell in the university center is very close, and the path just leads mm -hmm. uh, passing uh, on the other side. I think with that, what you're also um, pointing out is that the experience of listening to uh, Sandbox in particular, but your work in general and the work of uh, uh, walking artists or sound artists in general, um, experiencing these works is intensely personal, right? That the experience that you have as a consumer of the work is intensely unique. Uh, it's something that mm. is unique to the user, to the listener, and cannot be replicated by someone else because their experience will be slightly different, if not completely different. Because the sequence in which they listen to the works, to the individual audio pieces, will be different because they listen to these uh, audio pieces in different locations, uh, and because the uh, ambient sound that they will hear while they listen to these uh, uh, individual uh, 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 pieces of audio will be different. So the experience will be unique to the individual. 
Now, my question in relation to this is, um, um, because these experiences are uniquely individual, they also don't really scale up, as in, uh, if we, um, if there is a new film that comes out, um, let's say, uh, I don't know, the new uh, film uh, set in the DC universe or something, um, these are popular in part because we can share this experience, right? As consumers, we can talk about these things um, and uh, and and uh, identify that my experience is similar to another person's, and through that we can build on this collective uh, shared experience um, and make and and refer to something that is bigger than ourselves, but that's because these experiences, watching a film, is not individual. Um, do you have any idea as to how, you, or how do you, or maybe you don't, but is there a balance that you would like to strike or would like to see be struck between this intensely individual experience and um, um, a collective experience that allows for Scalability for scaling up um, the consumption of the work that you create. Uh, maybe I can just um, explain technically. First two pieces uh, were not created as a sound walk by itself. I mean, it was our sound walk, but uh, who will listen this will listen in the computer or in any other audio equipment. But the sound sandbox is a piece created for specific locations. And this is the same location at, uh, as the all audio files were uh, recorded. So actually we cannot move or we, we can move to a very similar location on the other city. So all our performative sand walk um, uh, Sound walks performance are all always very hard linked to the location, and whenever we would like to move or to uh, set it on the other uh, sites, it's a hard work because we would like to find a similar location as it was at the beginning. It means from the level of the audio because the audio level is completely different. If you are just moving couple of uh, not say couple of kilometers because it's a lot, but couple of hundred meters away and so we are actually like to play with this. So I just would like to tell maybe Brian I can continue that um, what is the difference between individual and collective uh, for me is that you are perceiving our works as individual experience because the sound of the space is different even if you start walking now or in a couple of minutes because some changing are happens uh, and also technically because we are dealing with this application and uh, the application is start um, it's working on the gps locators so when you are entrance to a particular place the audio um, is start playing uh, i mean for me it could be the possible uh, new performance that we would like to use the FM um, FM stereo, I mean FM radio, and the all uh, people, the group of people would start to listen at the same time and then we are going to the same to the same location, but again we're gonna listen individual. Um, I don't know, I just gave you some sort like a performance words. piece. Sorry? That would make it a little bit like a performance piece. I mean, uh, exactly. it is the performance piece already because as we notice in Slovenia, for example, um, audience will not go to listen such a piece if you will not conduct them with the headsets, with the uh, application and with the telephone. So no way. And uh, we are performing this as a performance. So we invite people, we said, okay, this time and that day, we will make the performance, please come, we invite you, you will pay the money. And uh, then we gave them a short instruction, we show the, the place, I mean the path, and they walk. And they yeah. come back and gave I, us I the think, tools. I think we all uh, here in uh, the cafe today um, can tell experiences of where the, cons the participant, uh, sorry, the consumer, the user, needs uh, his hands uh, to be held to actually uh, consume the work that we've created. This is uh, yeah, yeah. part of the bane of the existence of any artist, I think, I fear. Um, unless you're independently wealthy, maybe, then you don't care. Yeah. So, I don't know. And also, um, and also uh, 
uh, and also to avoid all these glitches and uh, technical issues, uh, we, uh, as producers of our pieces and works, we behave very much cooperative. That means that we provide the audience the whole uh, set of tools. Everything mm -hmm. is prearranged. I mean, they have the bags, they have the poems with the application installed, with the GPS location checked before. So there is no, almost no issues if mm -hmm. uh, when you are attending uh, these our performances because mm -hmm. we noticed we used a lot of those applications from Moodle's novel to Echoes. And we built our own application, which is very simple, running on Android. Uh, it's only 300 kilobytes, uh, the application itself, but it connects without G graphical interface, but it connects and it's stable and it's very precise regarding the location and triggering the location, you know, because we found out that a lot of them, a lot of those applications, depending on the unit that you're using, the mobile, uh, which has its own um, stuff in there, you know, without, you don't know what's built in, uh, and uh, the, the ranges of these error ranges of one unit to another, even if they're kind of the same, mm -hmm. could be very different, and also there is like operating system, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's uh, I mean, we did zillion hours of testing, and then we decided, no, we go to the shop, or we order through Amazon or eBay, a bunch of 20 or 30 phones, the same headsets, the it's same important. volume, everything yeah. is there, you know, it's packed. It's, uh, so did you have more control over the hardware? Over there, and, and that's it, yeah. yes. Now and you were then saying you have uh, this kind of stable environment yeah. where you can present your own work um, very clearly and more or less without issues. Now you were saying uh, you uh, tested for a zillion hours. Um, I'm a little bit skeptical about this, but um, when did you? Well, because a zillion, a zillion a little, minus. Guess, is... <laughs> now I'm asking uh, because uh, S Simon in the chat asked um, uh, whether uh, Sandbox was the result of years and years of work. Now I'm probably not, but you started uh, this during the first lockdown, so in like March or April maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, yeah. and then you released yeah, yeah. it in uh, September, so it was uh, maybe um, uh, part-time work over a period of a half year for course, the two of you. Of course, of course. Hey. <laughs> I mean, this is not our first uh, performance in Southwalk. Uh, it's our, I don't know how many we did it. I'm, I mean, yeah, quite few, quite, quite few. few, and some of them are more complex than this one was. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. yeah. Um, now another question, um, uh, comes in from Martin. Um, and if Martin wants, uh, you, Martin, you can ask, um, the question yourself. Um, but Martin has a special connection to both, uh, Brane and Irena because he was, um, a, um, uh, uh, what call it? He did a residency uh, last year in Slovenia um, uh, with Steklenik, if I'm not mistaken. Martin, do you want to ask the question, or should I? Um, I'll, I'm happy to ask it. Um, the I mean, my my question was a sort of compositional one. When thinking about building a piece. Um, how do you make the decisions um, about the balance between what you're going to put through the headphones and what you're going to expect to come in from the outside environment as a sort of um, leak into the piece that you've composed? Is it that everything that the walkers hear will be composed by you, or is it 50-50? Are there long periods of silence? Yeah, right. yeah very um, important question. Yes, uh, this is uh, this is the, the point, uh, this is the, the, the thing that we really work on each individual piece, and also uh, 
by checking and analyzing the, the different routes on, of different performances where we place then uh, the recorded sound and these extra layers uh, triggered by the GPS. It's, uh, it's also, it has also to do with the, with the headphones that we are using. I mean, uh, the balance between the, let's say, mastered uh, audio, which is uh, played back as a kind of sound path, and then also this, all these layers of the GPS locations, they, they get triggered depending of the speed of the um, walker, um, gets merged with the actual sounds that we cannot control, actually. So, uh, by leveling this, uh, it's not 50-50, actually it's, uh, let's say, 60-40 around. Uh, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it, it, you cannot guess. I mean, sometimes if the environment would be completely loud and uh, shouting. I mean, kids could be on the playground uh, or the school will go, uh, I mean, the people will go out shopping or something, you know, the tracks will pass. Uh, and sometimes the same place, it's completely silent or more or less completely silent. You know? So, but with this sandbox, it was really, really um, a challenge how to balance this uh, sounds recorded on this path along the rails, on this um, shaft uh, with all these stones and metal objects and all these uh, boxes full of uh, electronic equipment. You can also hear some EMS uh, sounds uh, in, in the composition as well. It was really a, a, a quite challenging how this will be heard later on when we recorded all these chunks of stuff, put them together, blend them together, sorted out how the, uh, uh, these layers of the GPS uh, inserts will come and how how what the fade in times and fade out times will be what the range of the gps location uh, where the sounds are placed will be etc uh, and of course as we said uh, the um, the the time when we predicted this uh, performance will be staged uh, we we knew that probably after the holidays, after the summer, uh, when the festival uh, uh, will be, uh, and we will be present there with the premiere, will be, the sound will be completely different. You know? So uh, all these things considering, uh, we had a lot of discussions uh, and uh, uh, a lot of things, I mean, of course, but at the end, you never know. You have the composition, which is kind of static, let's say, in the brackets. Um, it changes according to the speed of the walker and, you know, how some locations are triggered, but still the output from the outside, the input from the outside, it's, um, you, you just don't know. I mean, there were, I mean, there were uh, these trains passing uh, sometimes very loudly, so probably people couldn't hear a lot on their left hand side of the cans, you know, but uh, sometimes uh, it was completely like a fairy tale uh, early evening when we had uh, our it. performance staged. Maybe I can just add that uh, it's quite, um, sometimes they need a lot of test because uh, we are working the composition, of course, in the studio and on, on the headsets, in the total um, clean environment, let's say. And then it's not the case that you will listen to this composition in this environment. So you have to go outside all the time and test it in the same location where we would like to play and, and then uh, make some corrections in the studio as well. So this is a kind of combination how to 
uh, deal with the um, outside, I mean, with the real sound. And the other thing is that I really appreciate when uh, some audience say, oh, I didn't know what is the real sound and what is the part of the composition. And um, yes, that, I mean, for me, it's really nice because even when they take off the headsets, they said, oh my goodness, we are still in the composition, but they are not. So they are aware of the natural sound as they didn't, as they weren't before. And then you knew, then you know that uh, you did a good balance. Mm. <laughs> in a way. <laughs> in a way. Uh, yeah, in a way. <laughs> yeah. And of course, it doesn't work in place. It doesn't work in place. Bob, did I see you raise your hand earlier? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, in 1965, with 50 euros for six weeks, I hitchhiked around Europe, and uh, Yugoslavia it represented the furthest from London I could possibly get. So I uh, came from Salzburg to Ljubljana, and then across to Rijeka, and I took the boat down to Dubrovnik, which was two days, and took cost me two euros. Then came back to split and across to Brindisi. Well, my experience of space was, uh, because this was the furthest out, and it was in a pristine time, in a way, uh, there's something that that was, I went to art school the next year, so it was the beginning of my life in art, really, and this was my launch pad. And um, just the experience of going down the Adriatic with the olive groves and the blue of the Adriatic, and the sky and was uh, an overwhelming experience. And I'm just wondering if memory, you bring memory as a part of the act of walking as a composite part, because I've got this precious memory of, uh, well, I call it Yugoslavia, I know it's not any longer, but that whole area as a, 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 a I, I saw it wasn't, it, so it wasn't an art trip, so it was the space trip because there wasn't a lot of art, you know, Metrovic and people like that were in some of the churches, but it was mainly the old women with their black and grapes in the markets and that sort of thing. So it was a, a sort of quite a pure experience of, of that space, but it was something that stayed with me to, very, to now. So I'm just wondering if, if I can bring in, or you bring in aspects of memory in terms of space and sound, does it resonate in any way? Yeah, for me, of course. I mean, we just talked to Vibrane in the morning. Uh, I mean, it's not just memories. Of course, you can say these are memories, but more these spacious stories that are here in the place and that can be uh, development uh, through the time. And this, uh, the potential of the place that it's really not the same today or tomorrow or the next year. Uh, and you can, I mean, you can play with these memories or stories or just listening the how the place can develop, how the place changes. I mean, it's really so important uh, to realize that we are not in the same place because the place is changing through the time. And, uh, how to feel it? I mean, you you can feel it through the listening uh, much more than through the list uh, through the observing through the seeing. Of course, mm -hmm. you have to combine both. But uh, I'm pretty sure that a lot of us, a lot of people, are quite blindness for the hear the space. And when you open the hearing, uh, um, when you start to hear the space, you can really. Uh, see how the place was before and how it's not, um, I mean, how it's changing through the time. I mean, this uh, time uh, dimension is so important. Um, I don't know if I explain enough, but yeah, I, I, I also think did you... this uh, trip from Rijeka to Dubrovnik uh, 20 years ago in the 60. summertime. Six did years, it much but... earlier, I know. <laughs> I did 20 years ago, but I can imagine it yeah. the same. Um, it, it lasts two and a half days, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Overnight. <laughs> two euros. <laughs> yes. For two euros, uh, yeah, it, it was totally cheap. Uh, I mean. <laughs> yeah, really cheap. Yeah, actually, um, um, the thing with uh, space and time and memories is that uh, what we are dealing in our lifespan 
it's very tiny fraction. It's our, it's just kind of a, a millisecond of something, you know, which we are, we are here and we are here and present. And of course, all the traces that we leave after when we were here and all the traces they were left by our pre-ancestors uh, in the prehistoric and historic and pre -pre 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 prehistoric times, you know, they are here. I mean, actually, the, the place where I sit, we are not aware of that. I mean, we are not aware of magma, which is kind of a few hundred meters below us. We are just not aware that it's there. It's hidden from the our perception, from our hearing, from our sight. Uh, but let's say this place where I stand here, it was something completely different. And of course, the surroundings sounded completely different like 100 years ago, 200 years ago, uh, a zillion years ago, <laughs> you know. Uh, and to be aware of this time dimension, I mean, it's kind of really enormous if you would like to uh, go into this, uh, what these places, which were completely different, the ground was different, the, the, the scenography was different, they carry, I mean, but I believe they, it's like, it's believed that water has a memory, you know, I think the earth and the ground and the sand has the memory as well, as probably we are part of that uh, mm -hmm. also. And that's why we also have our memories and our dreams may, may even come from some of that connections with, you know, but, you know, so, yeah, I mean, memories and time and time lapses in were, I mean, every sound and field recordist uh, deals with archiving the, the time of the recording and the place and uh, putting some kind of time stamp or sound stamp of that particular place and space. Um, and then uh, archiving it for whatever reason, artistic or research, you know, that, and but uh yeah it's it's enormous actually uh, maybe we can just little bit switch this time also in the future if you would like to read the text of the sandbox mm. we already mm. put it into uh, your website uh walk, walk in september uh nice. so it's not just a memory that it was in behind but it's just it's also a future and we would like and with the sandbox we would like to mix uh, it over cycle this uh, possible memories that happens in the utopian future. Uh, mm. So it's not just, you know, the, this linear presence of time, but it's more like circular presence of time. Well, thank I, you I very much. That, I would say that um, uh, the uh, images that are conjured up, at least for me, with listening to Sandbox are. Uh, you say you you mentioned utopian, but uh, for me uh, it's really dystopian, in the sense that it's a, a future where um, humanity has uh, all but disappeared from the face of the earth, uh, and as you indeed mentioned in Sandbox, uh, where nature is taking over, um, yeah. which actually might not be dystopian at all. Maybe it is utopian. Um, but what you clearly are doing with, um, I, from my perspective, what you seem to be doing with Sandbox in particular is uh, and gender awareness of um, the influence of humanity on its environment. Um, now, um, a much more general question that I have to you is, uh, what do you see is the role of yourselves or artists in educating um, the, the, the public or in building awareness, uh, conveying a uh, idealistic message? I mean, as you said, Actually, uh, to be awareness of, uh, let's say in this case, of hearing, of the sound and of the space. I mean, uh, and of course you, it's always nice, especially, I mean, with the walking, uh, I really appreciate when I catch 
uh, when I add this uh, political action of the walking, because for me walking is really political action, it's not just uh, romanticize the nature around me, but it's really reason why uh, people are walking, why let's say women are walking, why um, how we know mate, I mean how the people from abroad are start to walking to the uh, Europe, I mean, what's happening with, uh, I mean, all this uh, community, I mean, the only thing that they can walk, uh, they cannot uh, afford some other uh, way of travel to Europe. Uh, I mean, I went to another story, but uh, actually, yeah, I mean, I think that art is just a very precisely awareness of the story that you would like to focus and um, even if it's a political story or a natural or combining or mixing all this stuff, it's very nice to put into the context of some other questions about um, your main issue. If I mm -hmm. I'm, I'm of course very glad that you are highlighting the influence of uh, humanity on the environment, but I would also like to point out that Brane uh, earlier mentioned the, the destructive nature of capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, it's a, yeah, yeah, I'm very happy that exactly. You I mean, here is uh, here is the point where you come to this dystopian and utopian uh, philosophical uh, issues or uh, views or cases. You know, uh, we we all know that probably uh, when this uh, episode will be over, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, we won't be probably here uh, as such, uh, but our traces will be there and we will be here. Um, uh, it will be uh, a place where uh, no one will be able to record or uh, to do any notes probably about what uh, the uh, place in, in that, that particular time will sound like, uh, which is uh, uh which is which is it leads you to this that uh the earth the all the planets they constantly change and uh we are probably happy that we have all these sensors that we can be here and uh accept all these impulses from uh from from our surroundings uh, to connect with uh, other people not nowadays, but yeah, you know, to do this uh, um, rush of energies and fluxes of uh, uh, things that uh, bounds us together. Right? But uh, I believe that uh, at the end it will be silence because there will be no only carrier that will uh, be. Uh, able to transform or trans transport the the sounds, uh, but also uh, just to add uh, uh, to one issue which we also deal with is like this noise pollution, educating about noise pollution and uh, being aware of that uh, that the, our threshold of perception perception of the uh, of the noise is uh, really getting higher and higher all the times and uh, we are as Irena said we are kind of blind in a way we are blinded uh, by uh, all this noise uh, which cannot which we cannot perceive as such because we are constantly bombarded with that and of course uh, Humans and animals, they have their own strategies how to compensate this uh, surrounding impact on, on them. And uh, it's either uh, sickness or uh, moving away to uh, other locations or finding the different spots of the day where the communication is more uh, likely to be uh, produced you now. Uh, so, uh, small, I mean, to 
I think it's very important that we deal with this uh, building the awareness of being in time and space and listen to all the details of the of the our surroundings and then uh, kind of analyze it in a way how they how they sound like and what is the message behind it and what channels they can open to us or to whatever thing you do or just I mean for me, it's uh, one of the most craziest thing is that you have a, a jogger or a runner that goes uh, into the woods uh, on all these beautiful paths with, full of, you know, trees, uh, water, you know, grass and so, but he's having this uh, phones and like playing probably some loud disco or rock music, and just like one of these sideways of the, this human behavior uh, in the place where he or she can really yeah. connect differently. Mm. Yeah, but this is, yeah, just, yeah, go on, please. Could I just add here that uh, also this, since the years ago, I was at that time aware of an enormously sophisticated, I don't know if it was the vibes, it was the people, but it was a total ambience that was totally unique in the whole of Europe. Uh, there was something, Highly sophisticated, which what you're where you're coming from is a continuation of exactly that, and you're hitting it right on. Psychogeography has a bearing on that as well. I think it's to do with an awareness. I don't know what it is, but it's almost an allowance to let sound speak and not to want to interfere with it. It's almost a Chinese, almost an Oriental sense of of um, togetherness, sort of thing, coexistence. Well, what, what I think we are, I mean, I'm speaking uh, to the converted, but uh, what we all uh, as society are being uh, conditioned in is uh, to, um, um, to accept the exact same um, lived experience, right? Uh, we're all forced uh, to listen to the same music, watch the same films, uh, wear the same clothes, uh, use the same tools. Um, and um, this is why this runner that Brane mentioned uh, listens to music while he runs in the woods because he's uh, perhaps in a, in a certain way afraid to disconnect. Um, yeah, I mean. And uh, part of uh, battling that or going beyond that is to facilitate the creation of a unique experience uh, and sound is, uh, or integrating sound into this experience is intensely individual because we experience it uh, individually uh, very much so. And because also we're not collectively listening to something, it is by design individual. Um, but uh, having said that, there was a bit of a chatter in the chat uh, around uh, the tension between individual and communal experiences. And Nigel, who sadly left, uh, mentioned a play which is called Punch Drunk, which I'm not familiar with. Punch Junk was an immersive um, theatre experience where they brought you in like one at a time um, and then you went through maybe, for example, an installation and so there were several rooms um, and everyone reacted to you individually. So every person had a, a slightly different experience. All right. Uh, but uh, uh, and it's so very good. through the same motions, but their experience was still individual. Yeah, it's an immersive theatre company, but apparently because it's so intense and it takes so many people, they were never able to um, be commercially successful because yeah. of the number, the amount of work that had to go in to um, making such an intense experience for um But it was, I, I went to one once and it was great, you know, a little, uh, they had a little house somewhere and they turned it into a set and everyone was dressed up. And it was a very, it was a little bit like there was something else in London called uh, You Me Bum Bum Train which was a very big version of this in a building in, uh, I think it was the old St. Martin's College in um, Art College in Charing Cross in London, just off Tottenham Court Road. And that was like a bigger version of that. And you went through um, a whole building. You, you went through like a sort of like room to room, like a production line. And, um, but they, they had volunteers. They had like so many people. It was absolutely incredible. But again, a lot of those people weren't paid because it was hard for them to do this on a, a long-term basis. I think I'm aware of this one uh, that was set in a building. Wasn't it also intensely expensive to participate as a, as a viewer or as an audience? I think so, yeah. Uh, uh, 
Um, thanks. Uh, that was Simon, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Thanks, Simon. Um, so, Hannah, do you want to say something about what you guys are doing with uh, your uh, communal experiences? Sure. Um, it actually kind of born out of uh, like the curiosity of wanting to 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 kind of meet our listeners. We were just curious, like who who is going to make time for the the work that we're putting out there, or are we just shouting into the wind? Um, and so. Um, starting from June, we released our very first linear audio walk, but previously we had um, sort of self-guided experiences of short um, audio stories that were geotagged all over uh, Manhattan and Brooklyn, where I'm based. And um, what was interesting, uh, I think, learning from our staycation series is that during this moment where um, I think we were, when we started, we were a few months into lockdown, um, but as summer was um, in full swing, people were, I think, desperate to have a uh, human connection again. Um, and so we found uh, releasing our staycation series one week, uh, focusing on a different neighborhood and walk and um, setting a time um, and a start point to meet at. Um, people actually showed up in, in really extreme weather, which New Yorkers don't do. They're notoriously flaky. Um, but it's been really wonderful to um, to be able to have this communal experience, but somewhat separately and maintaining safe distance, um, which I think this art form really enables. Um, and then really be able to talk about it uh, over um, while, while sitting on picnic blankets and um, with a skyline view uh, of Brooklyn Bridge Park uh, at the end, um, yeah, it seems it seems like a a fun way for people to connect with each other and the content itself. Thanks. So maybe what you're saying is that sound walking is the art of lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't designed that way, but it, it, yes, it no. just seems yeah. per appropriate. Well, you heard it here first. Um, <laughs> thanks, Anna. Um, is there, we are running out of time uh, because Brane and Irena uh, need to run for um, a cover, but Brane still has something to say in the six minutes that we have left. Yes. Yeah, right. Um, we actually, um, as some of you might know, uh, we, uh, like 11 years ago, we created a platform for sound art uh, and we launched it as a Radio Zona. Um, that's it's like a temporary radio station for contemporary art, uh, and we are li linking with uh, Club Radio in Berlin, uh, Kunst Radio, uh, Wave Farm in New York, etc., etc. Just to make the thing short, uh, we created a lot of uh, uh, pieces, interventions, uh, created a lot of curated. Uh, um, uh, broadcasts uh, which lasted just for a couple of days uh, legally uh, I have to point this out uh, legally uh, and uh, linking to sound walks uh, during this lockdown the second one uh, when the Stephanie gallery is closed we uh, kind of merged our experience by using the FM broadcast local um, range of one or two kilometers, uh, and we set up the, our radio station, uh, applied for this frequency, and we uh, continued with a special kind of openings of the sound of the Stecklinic Gallery, which also links to soundwalks, because we asked people, it's not allowed to invite people to join your event. But we said, well, we can invite people to the park, around the Tivoli Park, around the Steklenik Gallery, and listen to broadcast on their own. Right. More or less, all phones except Apple ones uh, have the, the radio chip in there. So uh, people were asked, you know, come to park, walk around, and enjoy the sound pieces. And it's like, you know, you're creating a temporary community which is dispersed due to the lockdown uh, regulations. But you are creating an event which is not online as we are now. Yeah. And we said, 
you know, using FM broadcasts, a temporary radio broadcasts uh, from one particular point um, with a radius around, it's a, it's a great uh, old technology which can last for long, you know, yeah. by using uh, its uh, uh, power, let's say. It just sounds great. We talk about, uh, we often talk about virtual galleries, but you're describing that you create an auditive gallery in physical space. Uh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's great. yes. By using uh, FM broadcast and presenting the sound works, we ended the uh, uh, the, the exhibition of Augustian Peroshek, the local Slovenian bioacoustic uh, compos composer. And now we are presenting uh, Mani Ristich, uh, her work, uh, Sonic Ontology of Negligence. But in the chat about a, a radio app for iOS, uh, they do exist, of course, but they do not uh, involve the FM chip that you need to receive FM radio um, in the wild. So they work. Yes, I mean you, you have to use that. You have to use uh, data. You know, you have to yeah. uh, stream. Yeah. Come on. And if I you're mean, a local broadcaster, on. then data yeah. is not going to help you anything. Um, no, no, the no. Broadcast is happening in a particular space. All right. Um, are there any last uh, second questions for Brane or Irena or anyone else in the room? Yeah, could I just add another bit? Have you got that? Yeah. I, uh, later, a couple of years later at art school, we had a theatre group. We came to uh, to Zagreb for the international theatre thing, and I remember being on the hillside, drinking sliver bits and eating suckling pig, while the shepherds were eating ribbon with their matchboxes on 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 the table. So that was a real sound experience that was quite unique and, and beautiful. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. That's great because I'm visualizing it right now. Um, yeah, fantastic. Uh, thanks to everyone. Um, as I said, we have to wrap up because um, the two uh, guests for today have to run for cover. Uh, I hope um, it was interesting to uh, yeah to uh, everyone involved. Uh, the recording will be available later online. Um, so then rests me uh, only to thank Brane and Irena. Uh, and for everyone else to uh, to nudge them to listen to Sandbox and the other works uh, that Brana and Irena have created. Thank you very much. Thanks, Brana and Irena, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.